Welcome everybody to the Prometheus Prime Show. I'm your host Prometheus Prime and today we're going to be responding to a Dark Souls video. Today's video has been recommended to me by my good friend Versus22. Her commissions are currently open, so buy all of her art. She is also making a video on the same person. So if you are a fan of mine, make sure to watch her video as well. Just do it after watching this video. Okay, so today we will be responding to a video by the creator named Harmon Smith. This man makes vlog content and seems to fancy Nintendo a lot. That tiny bit of information will be very important later. He also repeats himself a lot. So I will cut out all the redundant points he makes and I'll potentially make his points more focused because I'm just nice like that guys. Anyway, please take note of the title of this video. Dark Souls sucks. And will always suck. In spite of what fanboys may religiously believe. And we already have a problem. The title of this video is very confrontational towards the people you are trying to express your opinions to. So most likely the people you are trying to convince aren't going to listen to what you have to say because you have compared the opposition's love for their game to religious fanaticism. You already from the gate assume that these fans are irrational and maybe that's your plan. Maybe you are trying to get hate clicks, but arguing from this position is an uphill battle, especially since your video is so short. For those of you who are aspiring to be a YouTuber, here's a perfect example of what not to do when trying to have an open discussion with your audience. Now back when Dark Souls first came out in 2011, it was beloved by hardcore and casual fans alike. It was held in high regard for its immersive gameplay, cryptic storytelling, and enriching world building. I bring this up because your title alone makes a very bold statement, and you need a lot of extraordinary evidence to back up that claim. Not only do you have to prove that Dark Souls sucks, you'll also need to prove why their fans are wrong about the game. Considering this video is 6 minutes and 38 seconds long, well, do I even need to say it guys? But considering all that, let's hear him out anyways. I do not like Dark Souls. And it's actually one of my uh, most played Switch games, actually. I don't like Dark Souls. I think it's pure shit, and I think people really need to stop calling it one of the best games of all time, because it really isn't. It's clunky. Dark Souls in your eye seems to be clunky, which means outdated. Okay, how is that a dig on a game that was made 10 years ago? The gameplay mechanics are older, but are functional. When you press buttons, things happen, and the game reacts accordingly. So I don't see why being outdated is a bad thing, as long as it doesn't affect the gameplay. Dark Souls is dated, just like how Legend of Zelda Ocarina of Time is dated. But that isn't a dig on the quality of Dark Souls back then, and it isn't a dig now. Saying something is outdated isn't an argument. It's slow. It would be more than advantageous of you to show footage to provide your points. Because I don't know if you chose to be a heavy build, or your reflexes were badly timed, or if you played as a mage. Dark Souls is generally slow when it comes to movement. That can be due to the armor you're wearing, your carry weight, your strength and dexterity levels, the weight of the weapon, and how much stamina you have. The attack animations are supposed to be heavy because it's supposed to be immersive. When you attack an enemy, the action is final and takes up stamina. It gives every single move you make more importance. Mashing the attack button will more often than not put you in a bad situation and most likely lead you directly towards your death. Being slow in combat makes timing more meaningful in Dark Souls. Missing a block, parry, or an attack can make all the difference. The game forces you to actively engage with it, giving the player a sense of accomplishment when they finally take down a difficult boss. More often than not, you fail because of your lack of skill, and you'll need to get better in order to accomplish your goals. It's unintuitive. This is completely untrue. Most of the Soulsborne series has a very heavy reliance on intuition in order to progress through the world. The game is constantly asking the player to closely observe your surroundings and assess whether or not you should continue down the path you're on. 
During your first playthrough, you have no idea whether or not a bonfire will be in the next room, so you have to stop and ask yourself if you should press on despite having no Estus Flask left, or backtrack and come back later after you gain more strength. So what you're saying is absolutely untrue. Like most of the game is built around the player's intuition. So Dark Souls is not unintuitive. It doesn't make a whole lot of sense. Well, you say it doesn't make a lot of sense either. Compared to what? Real life? Dark Souls is a fantasy world filled with knights, dragons, and gods. Built around the established lore and laws of nature. So I don't understand how it doesn't make any sense. I mean, the story is there. You can read it. You can listen to it. You can see what it is. You need not keep yourself in the dark. And I think, above all, there are games that do the whole fantasy thing better, right? Uh, most notably, Zelda. Like, like if you like Dark Souls, like why, why are you not playing Zelda instead? You, you know what I mean? The reason why people who play Dark Souls aren't playing Zelda is because Dark Souls and Zelda are different franchises and ask different things of their player bases. Dark Souls is an action RPG, and The Legend of Zelda Ocarina of Time is an action-adventure game with light RPG elements. Dark Souls focuses on maintaining your stats and equipment while crawling through perilous dungeons while being uncertain that you will survive. You need to have your wits about you or you will end up dead. The Legend of Zelda franchise is generally more focused on equipment management and solving puzzles to reach your objective, and collecting enough powerful items to defeat bosses and solve puzzles. Most of the enemies in Legend of Zelda Ocarina of Time have adequate defensive capabilities, but you can still slash away to your heart's content, and even use items to bypass enemy defenses. In the 3D Zelda games, enemies do a moderate amount of damage providing a minimally challenging experience while also being open enough for people to play more casually. Link is very quick on his feet. He is also a very experienced swordsman with a large supply of special items to help him along his way. Dark Souls and Zelda are two different experiences. The most similar system they have between each other is their targeting systems. Dark Souls just doesn't explain to you all these different status conditions, um, you know, how equipment works, uh, poise, like all this stuff that just kind of makes the game more complicated than it really needs to be. Dark Souls can be very vague, but that's because Dark Souls is a game that pushes the player to actively engage with it. Dark Souls wants you to learn the attack patterns of the enemies and how the leveling system works. Dark Souls understands that you will make mistakes and wants you to learn from them. Dark Souls asks of the player to pay attention to it and it doesn't give you a large quest marker and a journal. Dark Souls doesn't tell you exactly where to go because it wants you to explore different areas and take risks to understand the game better. Dark Souls treats you like an intelligent adult and makes you have to think. And if you are having trouble understanding aspects of the game, then you should press the help button whenever you interact with things so you can find out more about it. With the help button, you can find out exactly what items do, what they are, and how they work towards everything else. It's not really difficult. It's convoluted and obtuse and doesn't, doesn't make a whole lot of sense. Once you know what you're doing, it is incredibly slow and boring. Uh, it, unbelievably so, in fact. It's not truly difficult in, in that regard, right? Uh, all you have to do is just figure out how to exploit it and you're basically set. You're basically set to go through the entire thing all the way to the end. Okay, so which is it? Is Dark Souls complex and convoluted or obtuse and exploitative? You need to make up your mind. Every video game is exploitable. That's the drawbacks of having gameplay systems that act and react consistently. A general side effect to making a video game with mechanics that can be understood and utilized by the player is exploitation. You can say the same thing about Zelda games like Ocarina of Time. In combat, all you need to do is find out what item stuns the enemy or wait until they are vulnerable then attack them. Some enemies have defenses that can't be broken, but all you need to do is do what you do for most enemy types. Block and attack. Block and attack. This strategy will generally put you in the least amount of danger. Block and attack. And you win against most enemies in Ocarina of Time. Does that mean the combat is bad? Of course not. But understand that every game can be exploited. In Dark Souls, the very best way to exploit the enemies is to learn their attack patterns. Knowing exactly how an enemy will attack and when the attack will land combined with proper timing will allow you to conduct the most damage in the shortest amount of time. 
dodging, blocking, parrying, backstabbing, etc. You have now invested time and focus on the combat mechanics, and your natural skill has increased. You know exactly what to look for in the enemy attack animations, and you know exactly what moves to make to become victorious. The only outlying factor at play is your ability to execute these actions provided you get the chance. When you go back to the previous area after beating it, you have now become the boss of that stage. You know all their attacks by heart, and you react accordingly. Your stats also complement how powerful you've gotten, and now you are able to kill enemies that have once given you trouble in one attack. You now move with a powerful and confident disposition, sometimes without even thinking. You are forced to be reckoned with, and you have immersed yourself into the game. This is how you properly exploit Dark Souls. Being able to exploit the game is your reward for understanding what the game wants from you and delivering the end of the bargain you make every time you press the start game button. And like it, it tries throwing all this weird stuff at you, it, it doesn't matter very much. Like after Out Orlando, the game takes a big nosedive in, uh, in, in quality. Uh, I think even hardcore fans agree with that. I, I don't find any, any aspect of it enjoyable. Right, like I much prefer games with like smooth animations, uh, like in-depth, complicated combat and uh, fast-paced action. But you just said Dark Souls was convoluted, which means it's complex. The combat can be fast-paced if you know what you're doing and if you have the skill required to perform. The animations are smooth and act consistently with what's happening. Immersion is very important to the experience of Dark Souls, and it shows in the combat primarily. The hitbox are generally tight in Dark Souls. When you attack, you are committed, but stamina is important to manage, and because animations adapt to how fatigued you are, the enemies make it very clear when they will attack you. The only thing that isn't smooth are the ragdoll physics. Maybe the reason you think the animations aren't smooth is because you are playing Dark Souls on a console with inferior hardware. Yeah, I said it. Shit like Metroid Dread, stuff like Sin and Punishment, stuff like Star Fox 64, Ocarina of Time, stuff, all of that I think is way better than Dark Souls. Metroid Dread, Senate Punishment, Star Fox 64, and even Ocarina of Time are completely different games than Dark Souls. Look, it's absolutely fine to have a preference for those games, but it sounds like to me like you played Dark Souls like you played the rest of these games, hoping you'd get a similar experience and naturally got disappointed because of that. These games ask different things of their player bases, and trying to play Dark Souls like you play Zelda doesn't always guarantee success. And uh, one of the things I've been feeling in recent years is why would I ever bother playing anything other than those games? Remember this point, because it's going to be very important later. Its entire appeal, I think, has nothing to do with the game, it has nothing to do with like uh, the difficulty or anything like that. It's this idea that like, oh man, beating Dark Souls, it, it makes you like a real gamer. That was, that was the big thing that game journalists tried to push. Wait a minute, you actually care about what game journalists say? Well, there's your problem right there, my guy. Game journalists don't care about representing a game accurately. Most game journalists are massive shills who want to push a narrative about a certain video game. To these social media parasites, what is true about video games is secondary to what is marketable. Like uh, a decade back, or in Gamergate, right? Yeah, I'm pretty sure Gamergate had more to do with the conversation about Zoe Quinn and Anita Sarkeesian. Something about ethics and journalism, which there aren't any. I think people were just sick of their video games being misrepresented by individuals who have no investment or experience in them. However, I don't really remember anything Gamergate related when it came to Dark Souls. Uh, oh, uh, I, I know what I'm doing. I, I know what I'm talking about when it comes to games. I, I can beat Dark Souls. I'm hardcore. No. There is no singular game you can beat that makes you an authority on what games are of quality. You aren't any more or less informed or objective because you have beaten Dark Souls. That doesn't even necessarily mean you're good at video games if you beat Dark Souls, because Dark Souls can be mastered by anyone given enough time and investment, which is one of the main draws of the game. Literally everybody can win, but you have to earn it. Need I remind you that Dark Scythe Phil beat Dark Souls? I really don't need to say more. If anyone actually believes that beating Dark Souls is an actual rite of passage into becoming a true gamer, then those people are idiots that shouldn't even get any attention. Like, because Dark Souls is different than other games, you can't really take 
what uh, Dark, uh, Dark Souls knowledge and apply it to something like, I don't know, Bat and Kaido's Origins or The Wonderful 101, right? Uh, th those, uh, those games are, for one thing, better, uh, but they're also completely different. And, like, beating Dark Souls doesn't somehow make you, like, qualify to talk about other genres. It's interesting that you say that, Harmon, because you can apply that same exact logic to Dark Souls. Dark Souls is a different game than Star Fox 64, Metroid Dread, Senate Punishment, and Ocarina of Time. So you can't take knowledge from those particular games and apply them to Dark Souls and make judgments on Dark Souls quality based on those other games. Psst. This is where a script could have saved you from making a fool of yourself on the internet. Right, particularly Nintendo games. Nintendo isn't that special little bean that is beyond reproach, any more than any other game company. And to think otherwise is to apply an unfair standard in favor of your favorite video game company, which I can only classify as being a blind ass fanboy. Your crippling bias is showing and it is embarrassing. Uh, that, that's what I saw like 10 years ago when Dark Souls first came out. Oh man, Dark Souls, it, it's so much better than every Zelda game. Fuck off! I don't really remember anyone saying Dark Souls is better than Zelda. The most I remember is that mini-series that the completionist did with MatPat. And all they did was compare the combat mechanics between the games. And you aren't showing any proof, but I guess I'll just have to take your word for it then. You ignorant little shit. Dark Souls is irrelevant. It's dead, it's buried, Elden Ring will not be able to compete with Breath of the Wild. Dark Souls is irrelevant. That is an interesting statement to make. The Soulsborne franchise has made its mark on the gaming industry. Big YouTubers still talk about Dark Souls and their experiences to this very day. And the most popular combat mods for Skyrim, which just got a big re-release, are mods that give Skyrim Dark Souls combat. The Souls series collectively sold almost 30 million copies. And now because of the Switch has more people playing it. You have no way of knowing how Elder Ring will do. Maybe it will beat Breath of the Wild. Who can say? Dark Souls may not be as popular as it once was, but it is still very relevant in the gaming space. Your argument holds no water whatsoever. It's done. Uh, nobody cares about Dark Souls 2, 3, or Sekiro. Or Bloodborne, for that matter. If nobody cares about these games, then why are there still relatively big YouTubers still playing and making videos about these games? Why are people still making animations, memes, and ranking videos if they are so irrelevant and forgotten? And Elden Ring, I think, will be the last gasp of relevancy for this franchise, and From Software will be forced to actually come up with something new for once, which I don't think is even possible for them to do. How much longer is this going to go on? How much longer are people going to, like, keep eating up this repetitive nonsense? <laughs> oh, okay. You want to talk about repetitive franchises? All right, let's do this. Ooh, boy. Let me tell you about Nintendo, buddy. Time and time again, Nintendo has been shitting out the same exact uninspired, recycled franchises that were popular before I was even born. Look, I didn't want to do this, man, but you forced my hand. Fire Emblem Shadow Dragons for the DS and Sewer Famicom. Fire Emblem Echoes. Fire Emblem Gaiden for the DS and Famicom. Fire Emblem Mystery of the Emblem. Fire Emblem Genealogy of the Holy War. Fire Emblem Tracia 776. Fire Emblem The Binding Blade. Fire Emblem The Blazing Blade. Fire Emblem The Sacred Stone. Fire Emblem The Path of Radiance. Fire Emblem Radiance Dawn. Fire Emblem Awakening. Fire Emblem Fates. Fire Emblem Three Houses. Oh, you think I'm done? No, I'm not done. It's time to go to the Pokemon series for a second. Pokemon Red and Green, Pokemon Red and Blue, Pokemon Yellow, Pokemon Gold and Silver, Pokemon Crystal, Pokemon Ruby Sapphire, Pokemon Fire Red and Leaf Green, Pokemon Emerald, Pokemon Diamond and Pearl, Pokemon Platinum, Pokemon Heart Gold and Soul Silver, Pokemon Black and White, Pokemon Black 2 and White 2, Pokemon X and Y, Pokemon Omega Ruby and Alpha Sapphire, Pokemon Sun and Moon, Pokemon Ultra Sun and Ultra Moon, Pokemon Sword and Shield. And you know what? I'm not fucking done, my guy. Oh, here we go. Let's talk about Nintendo's Golden Goose. Mario Jumpman motherfucking Mario. Super Mario Brothers, Super Mario Brothers 2, Super Mario Brothers 3, Super Mario Land, Super Mario World, Super Mario Land 2, Super Mario All-Stars. 
And those are just the 2D games, not all of them by the way. Super Mario 64, Super Mario Sunshine, Super Mario Galaxy, Super Mario Galaxy 2, Super Mario 3D Land, Super Mario 3D World, New Super Mario Brothers Wii, New Super Mario Bros for the DS, New Super Mario Bros 2, New Super Mario Bros U, Super Mario Maker, Super Mario Maker 2, Mario Odyssey, and Mario Run for the fucking mobile phone. And that's not to mention all the spin-off sports and party titles. The arguments you are making against the Soul series can easily and more accurately be attributed to the Nintendo franchises. Mario isn't a fucking character, he's a brand. You want to sit on your couch and talk about how the Soulsborne series recycles the same games over and over again when the game company that you fucking worship has way more repetitive shit to answer for? Ooh, I know you lack all self-awareness. But since you are a writer, I really hope you understand the concept of irony. It's like that, that's not well made, not well crafted, not visually interesting, not engaging, not well written, not very good mechanics. Like it's not a quality franchise. I really hope you can back those claims up because right now all you are saying is that the game isn't of quality because you personally don't enjoy playing it. And at the end of the day, that's your opinion and nobody can take that away from you but my opinion of your opinion is that your opinion sucks and I have evidence to prove it. All right, but people have been so convinced that it is by YouTubers and just word of mouth. It's annoying. Wait a minute, so you're saying that YouTubers convinced people the game is good even though the game is actually bad. Okay, that's not how that fucking works, man. And you know what? That's actually very insulting of you to say. How very arrogant a statement of you to make. You foolishly asserted that nobody playing the game enjoyed the game on their own accord, but were told by YouTubers that it's good. If you actually believe this, then you lack any respect or deep understanding for the human experience. The fact that you think that everybody is so brainwashed, but you and you alone see the game for what it truly is, makes you ignorant, arrogant, and completely out of touch. Maybe, just maybe, People are different than you and can enjoy something that you don't without the influence of YouTubers. Maybe people can have their own experiences and have fun playing what they do. Can you even entertain that possibility? This never should have been like a, a major announcement at the end of any Nintendo Direct, right? Uh, Dark Souls is not that big of a deal. Apparently it was a big enough reveal for Nintendo themselves to acknowledge it. You aren't questioning your lord and savior Shigeru Miyamoto, are you? It's not, it's not something I want to return to ever again. Uh, I, I keep doing it for some reason just to see like what, uh, just to like keep my skills up. Just so I can like say that like, yeah, I can beat Dark Souls. I just choose not to because it's not fun. I, I would like Dark Souls to kind of be acknowledged as being a fluke. <laughs> well, good luck with that, man. Right? It's not technically mechanically a good game but people are fanatically obsessed with it because really if you are not a nintendo gamer you have nothing else to play uh, and we finally made it guys damn it that was worse than acer thorn at least acer thorn tries to show evidence for his points all you did was sit on your couch and use a bunch of buzzwords that don't even go into detail about why you feel the way you do. Maybe this is just how you make videos. Low effort, no evidence, and everyone is just supposed to listen and agree. I will say that the videos you make are good for the algorithm, but it would also behoove you to at least understand the subject matter enough to be able to make such criticisms of Dark Souls quality in earnest. You know, rumor has it that Sony is moving shop to PC. Good for them. They understand that exclusivity is dying and people want to connect with each other on a universal gaming experience. You accuse people who like Dark Souls of religious fanaticism, even though all this time you were talking like a cult member. I think Nintendo is going to be the last holdout to be left behind with fading memories of the good old days when they used to rule the entire gaming industry. Nintendo used to have good PR with gamers. Then they started striking down channels that would actively advertise their games. They would strike down channels that would give mostly positive reviews of their work. And they have slowly but surely lost goodwill with old school fans. 
Then they started suing emulator companies so people couldn't enjoy their games without paying for them in shittier quality than the original made decades ago. Nintendo's ports of their old video games suck and people are being actively punished for keeping the legacy of Nintendo's glory days alive. Before you finished your video, you said if you aren't a Nintendo player, you have nothing else to play. But you and I both know, the truth is, if you aren't a Nintendo player, you literally have everything else to play. And that's the end of my video, guys. Thank you guys for watching. So long, farewell, leave me the fuck alone, and take care.